the magnitude of the electric field has got to be equal to the magnitude of the magnetic field times the speed at which it's traveling. Okay. So let's hang on to that and do the very last equation here, which is this new thing, this Ampere-Maxwell law. I'm just going to run through it, but the basic idea is we do the exact same thing as we did for Faraday's law. I'm just going to choose a different orientation for my loop. And the way it's going to work is I'm going to choose a loop instead of, in fact, you can think of sort of rotating the picture. If I rotate the picture like this, so that the electric field is pointing out and the magnetic field is pointing down, I'm going to choose a loop that goes through the region that way. Okay, so imagine instead choosing a loop that's oriented in this plane, in the plane of perpendicular to the board here. And so if I just rotate the picture and draw uh, B, or excuse me, E pointing out. and B pointing down. Then I can go through the exact same reasoning. Okay, here's our slab again. I can go through the exact same reasoning using a loop oriented like that. Okay, so now I'm looking at the electric flux on this side and how it's changing, how it's related to the path integral of the magnetic field around the loop. So just by analogy, I'm going to have, this is again uh, the width, W. This is X. And the, it's moving a little bit, delta X, which is equal to V delta T. So I have a flux here, a magnetic, or excuse me, an electric flux through this region. And let me erase some of this. My phi electric now is going to be E times the area or E times uh, X times H, okay? My delta phi is going to be E times that change in area or E times delta X times H, which is E times V delta T times H. And the change in electric flux per unit time, I just divide out that time and I get E times V times H, okay? So on this side of the equation, I get mu naught epsilon zero E V H. On the other side of the equation, I have B dot delta L and I do the exact same type of path integral again, right? Out here, the magnetic field is equal to zero. Along this part of the path, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the path, so I get zero. And then I go downward, and that's going to contribute what? BH, B times H. Okay, so this part of the path gives me B times H, and everywhere else, again, gives me zero. It's perpendicular here. It's zero out here. So I end up with BH on this side of the equation. And once again, the H cancels out. So I get another relationship. From applying Faraday's law, I get E is equal to B times V. Okay, so this comes from Faraday. Applying Maxwell, the Ampere-Maxwell law, I get B is equal to mu naught epsilon naught V times E. Well, let me look at these two equations and see if I can cancel some things out and see if I can solve for this V. Let me plug, let me plug uh, this equation into this one. And so I have E equal to uh, mu naught epsilon naught V E times another factor of V. And then the electric field will cancel out. And I get 1 is equal to mu naught epsilon naught V squared. And I get V squared then is equal to 1 over mu naught epsilon naught, where V is equal to 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught. Well, mu naught we know is 4 pi times 1 times 10 to the minus 7, and the units are tesla meter per ampere. 
And epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 uh, Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared. So here's, here's what I want you to do. Everybody, take out a calculator. Grab a calculator. Plug those numbers into this relationship and calculate what V is. What do you get? You get the speed of light. You get 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And that's no coincidence because what is this traveling region of electric and magnetic fields? It's light. This is a pulse, essentially the simplest pulse of light you can have, just a constant pulse of traveling E and B. But this is light. Electric, and so we call this electromagnetic radiation, and it was the triumph of Maxwell's theory that he showed that light was, in fact, this propagating disturbance in electric and magnetic fields. And we'll pick up with that next time.